saw Mike Ellis the other day, and he told me, he says, if Bobby Purcell could have blocked downfield, man, no telling how many touchdowns I would have scored. <laughs> <laughs> but in the spring of Bobby's senior year, I was named varsity baseball coach at Clinton High School. Bobby was a left-handed throwing, left-handed hitting first baseman on that team with, with a lot of interesting characters that he associated with on that team. Some of them may be here present night. In fact, I know some of them are. Tonight to help Bobby celebrate his induction. Some of those members of that team were Phil Lambert, Dennis Bellamy, Joe Butler, Gary Rayner, James Register, Albert Kirby, Keith Price, Raphael Smith, Richard Caldwell, and Calvin Williams were some of the infamous characters, along with others that were Bobby's teammates on that team. This experience of coaching these characters prepared me for anything I would face in my coaching career. We actually finished with a winning record. All of them were pretty decent baseball players, pretty good baseball players. I think we might have finished second in the conference that year. But after graduating, Bobby moved on to college. He went to NC State University. Later, he graduated from UNC Chapel Hill. After graduating from UNC Chapel Hill in 1977 with a BS degree in business administration, and I'm not sure in Bobby's case what the BS stood for, you can just imagine. But uh, he entered the business world with the Whirlpool Corporation. After two years, Bobby returned to school, received a master's degree in sports management from the University of Georgia. During his tenure in Georgia, Bobby worked as a volunteer graduate assistant under Coach Vince Dooley, and later served as internship with the Atlanta Falcons under Charles Dayton. Bobby joined the North Carolina State Wolfpack coaching staff in 1981 as a part-time assistant football coach under Monty Giffey. He helped coach running backs, special teams, and the defensive scout team. He also served as the academic counselor for the football program. When Tom Reed became the head football coach in 1983, he named Bobby as an assistant coach and recruiting coordinator. Bobby quickly gained recognition as one of the ACC's top recruiting coordinators or recruiters. Among his signees was Eric Kramer, who was named the 1986 ACC Player of the Year. When Dick Sheridan came, became the head football coach in 1986, he named Bobby as his recruiting coordinator. He also handled administrative duties for Sheridan, including the Dick Sheridan Skills Camp, uh, which he invited me to work at one summer. Uh, and one story about Bobby during the Sheridan years, Coach Sheridan had come from Furman University. Uh, he brought all the coaches, most of his coaches with him up here. Those coaches were good old country boys. They were down here in South Carolina and in the country, and they were really good football coaches. They were really good football coaches. A couple of them liked to go red up. And uh, so Bobby would call me up time to time, maybe once or twice a year, set up a, a hunt trip for these guys to, to come down. He knew that some of my players had rabbit dogs and that they loved, uh, they loved to, to rabbit hunt. And they would come down from time to time and they would even bring their sons. And we just had a, a really good time socializing and, and getting together and enjoying, enjoying hunting and being the time with, with one another. Uh, I might mention they were a lot better football coaches than they were rabbit hunters. <laughs> Bobby's parents were Ed and Tate Purcell, who moved to Clinton from Larnburg, North Carolina. Ed had a brother named Gus Purcell. He was a well-known football coach at Myers Park High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. He ran a football camp or a quarterback camp in Charlotte during the summer. College coaches from all over the South would come and work this camp, and, and aspiring quarterbacks from all over the country would come to this prestigious camp. Bobby was in charge of looking after the campers and inviting her over to them at night. And Bobby got me a job one summer helping them up there doing that. 
during the day I was able to uh, go around and watch the coaches and observe them, how they taught their skill positions and the fundamentals of quarterback play, which was very important to me at, at that time in my coaching career. But in July 1987, Bobby became the assistant director of the Wolfpack Club under Charlie Bryant. He coordinated fundraising efforts in 49 counties. He directed the courtesy car program and oversaw the management of the Stroud Wolfpack Center. In 1991, Bobby became and served as the executive director of what is known as the Wolfpack Club. During his time as executive director, executive director, the club raised over a half billion dollars. That's more than I made at Midway High School. My whole <laughs> half billion dollars in support of student athletics at North Carolina State. Bobby has overseen the successful completion of the $55 million Wolfpack Pride campaign. $55 million gold line campaign and numerous smaller campaigns. The Wolfpack Club is currently in a $210 million project, which is part of the university's Thank and Do Extraordinary Campus Wide campaign. Under Bobby's leadership, the Wolfpack Club oversaw the renovation of the Carter Family Stadium, the construction of the Wendell H. Murphy uh, Center. Uh, I think Mr. Murphy is here tonight to help support Bobby in his efforts there with his Murphy Center and also the Richard Vaughn Times. Bobby's influence is widespread in college athletics. 26 of his former staff members serve at other universities today, including two athletic directors, Jimmy Bass at UNCW and Carlton Creech at the University of Denver. Bobby served his National Association of Athletic Development Director's President in 2004 and 2005. It was named University Fundraiser of the Year in 2007. 2014, it was recognized with the National Association of Athletic Development Director's Lifetime Achievement Award. 2017, the NAAD named its Mentorship Program the Body Purcell Mentoring Program in recognition Bobby's reputation for helping mentor so many others. Bobby retired as executive director of the Wolfpack Club on June 30th, 2020. He currently serves as a special assistant to the North Carolina State Athletic Director, Boo Corbin. Bobby was inducted into the North Carolina Sports Club Hall of Fame on July 21st, 2021. Bobby has never forgotten his roots in Sampson County. Bobby's priorities have always been his faith in God, his family, North Carolina State University, and Clinton, North Carolina. He and his lovely wife, Lori, who also is a Sampson County girl, have a son, John, and daughter, Paige. They're with him, to, they're with him tonight. And it is with great pleasure that I present to you tonight, my good friend, for induction into the Sampson County Sports, Talk, Sports Club Hall of Fame, the most deserving, Mr. Bobby Purcell. Unexpectedly, 
the great, great Dark Horse family, the White Candies here tonight, Candy. You're in our prayers. I also want to thank my family. As you heard so much, I think that's we had touched on it. When you work in athletics, you're never at home. You've got a lot of nights, a lot of weekends. Your families have to make sacrifices. I don't want to thank my, excuse me, thank my family for that. Only wish my parents could be here. They would be so happy. I want to thank Tim Pope. You've heard so much about Tim tonight. But let me tell you this. He does pretty much all of this by himself. He leaves a tr tremendous undertaking. Uh, it's a lot of work. Just having the dinner right here tonight is a significant uh, time for now. Let's, let's get Tim a big round of applause. And Tim's family is part of the reason I'm up here tonight because when I was a child, probably fifth, sixth grade, seventh grade, my brother and I worked on his daddy's tobacco farm, Perry Poe. And I knew right then, as I've been sitting here tonight, I knew right then that I was going to go to college and do something else. <laughs> so, uh, but thank you for the tunes, family. It's really an honor to be a part of this class, too. This is a very special group. It's a big honor for me to be a part of it. Tell you a little bit about Al Britt. Al, I got to know Al very well early in 1980. We were recruiting Bobby Crumper from Hobson. Got to know Al, came down to Hobson quite a few times. I signed Al on sign on sign. Bobby on Simon Day. And I got to have a lot of respect for him and also began to realize he's the kind of guy you want your son to play for. So an honor to be up here with Al. Jim Darwin. Now, I was a little kid when he was playing Clinton High School, but one of the big things I remember for, for years and years, Dennis Bellamy and I used to go to Clinton High School games on Friday night and watch Jim Darwin, Murray Poole, Ricky Packard play basketball. And they could spend the night with each other. Those are memories we still talk about occasionally. What a great career Jim had. And Chris King, let me tell you about Chris King. You know, he, as we all know, he was highly, highly recruited at NC State. Jim Pitchfield had one of the really bad. The Pitchfield man had called me one day. He said, Chris King is going to be here on his official visit this weekend. I want you to come pick him up. All right? before we start practice and driving around, spend some time with him, talk to him, take him over to meet Dick Sheridan on a football coach. We really got to get this kid. So Chris and I get in my, I had a pickup truck at the time. We get in my truck and ride around campus and go out to the football stadium and meet Dick Sheridan and have a good visit there. We come back and we just had a great time. We said, I thought we were having a great time. <laughs> Come back and drop and take, take Chris over to practice, it's just a basketball practice. And Coach V pulled me aside and said, How'd he go? And I said, Coach, we got him. <laughs> he loves NC State. Three days later, he signed Wake Forest. <laughs> and Coach Fred Abbott, I've known him up for a few years. We don't know each other very well, but I've my father this career. And he wanted a great great person he is and has affected so many young people I really enjoy following his career and being up here with him tonight too. I think everybody understands or knows the uh, old saying it takes a village. Well, my village was clean. And I could not have grown up in a better place in the world for me. I'm a product of all the people that are in my village and had an impact on me throughout my career and of my life. My life has really been shaped by people in clean. My teachers, my preachers, my coaches, my friends, my classmates, my teammates, all of them have had an impact on me. It's just a, a real honor to have been from Clinton and from Sampson County. I've had so many coaches through Little League, Pee Wee League, I'm going to mention a few of them. Sorry if I, if I miss somebody. I've tried to make sure I have them, I'm sure I probably have. Just some names that catch me along the way. Herman Bunch, Willie Jacobs, Sprunt Hill, Braden Parker, Joe Robinson, Monty Bristow, Marshall Hamilton, John Hales. All of them had a little impact on me along the way. But there's five I really want to talk about briefly tonight and, and say the thing that I've learned from them as well. 
Um, they all impacted me in the way I do things, my philosophy of life, I think my own values set are influenced greatly by these people. First, it takes Bobby Robinson. And you know, you'll notice all of us, we call each other, we call our coaches coach. You know, you never call by the first name. It's, it's quite an honor to play for some of these people, and I want to always recognize them as my coach. Coach Bobby Robinson. Things I learned about him be very thorough. Always thorough. We were always prepared. We never went to a game and got surprised about anything. He was also always so positive. Just a very positive man. He kind of instilled that confidence in him that you needed to play. He always had that little, he always walked fast and was energetic and positive and just taught me so much about being a positive thinker in my life. Some of the guys that are here tonight to play football with us, play for Coach Lewis and Coach Robinson, Bill Starling, Dennis Bellman, Thaddeus Scott, Mike Ellis, Albert Kirby, and I hope I didn't miss anybody else. And Coach Robinson, thank you. You've got to hand back on it. You've been a great influence on me for many, many years and continue to do so as, as we speak. Coach Tommy Song. As he said, I got fortunate to play on the first team he ever coached with a JV baseball player in the ninth grade. But his big thing was think ahead. Don't worry about the last pitch, don't worry about the last play. Think ahead and play hard. And I've always remembered that. And his big thing for every inning he go ahead. Think and hustle, think and hustle. He was saying think and hustle, but he talked about think and hustle. <laughs> so we think and we hustle. Played hard. He runs to bed. We, we, we ran more sprints and bat and baseball than we did in football. We never understood that, but we always were in shape and we played hard with us. A couple of stories about him. He took one of them away from me, but uh, one time we were getting ready to play, a, I don't know why we were doing this, we were, we were going to play a double header at Sanford, Sanford Central High School. They were always really good. For some reason, we were playing a double header on Saturday. It's the only time we ever did this. And we get on the bus. Now, Coach Sloan was from Sanford. This is his first head coaching job going back to his hometown. His mother and his father were coming out and watching coach. I think his brother was coming. So he was really nervous, really, really jacked up, really excited. We loaded the bus. I think the game started at, at 1 o'clock. So we get on the bus, head up to uh, Sanford. About halfway there, Phil Lambert comes up to the front of the bus and said, Hey, Coach, what are we going to do for lunch? <laughs> coach saw him turn white as a ghost. He hadn't even thought about that. All the time I'm thinking ahead, thinking ahead, he had no idea about lunch. <laughs> we were here by two days in the hot sun, and he didn't have any lunch. <laughs> so I saw him, I saw him uh, whisper to a bus driver, Royce Timber. All you Glenn guys remember Royce Timber. Rode us on all his trips. Next thing I know, we pulled into a country store on the side of the road. Coach Sloan got out, went in, came back out, two loaves of bread, two packs of bologna. <laughs> he, he said, the he'd make a sandwich and pass it back. <laughs> we had nothing to drink. We had nothing to drink. I made him a bologna sandwich. We had nothing to drink. When we get in here, we proceed to the cocaine. And we get back to him. And also, a lot of you don't remember, don't remember this, but on JB Baseball at Clinton, the Pratt's had prison camp. The varsity would be on the team on the, on the field, stadium at the school. We had to be a change into a practice gear, get on the bus, and ride out to prison camp and practice on their baseball field. Now, their baseball field was enclosed with chain link fence all the way around, pretty high. You couldn't get out. <laughs> And right beside the main fence, the barbed wire fence at, at the prison. And all the prisoners would come out and they'd on the fence and watch us. And we were a little bit scared. And sometimes the foul ball would go to the fence over into the prison camp. We never saw that ball again. <laughs> we were too scared to go there and ask them to pull it back to us. But we had some great times over there. We had some pretty good teams as well. That was a prison camp story. These are the true stories. Coach Bob Lewis, what a great coach. We've, I got an opportunity to play Coach Lewis on JV football for two years. 
And we knew then he was a great case. He didn't have a great career, which proved to be the truth. The things that Coach Lewis I took from him and served me for the rest of my life were being mentally and physically tough. We were always tougher than everybody we played. We were very physical. We might not have been the most talented, but we were very physical. We were very mentally tough, physically tough. And I think that mental toughness has stayed with me and that helps you in life through so many things that you face going on further in, in your career. But Coach Lewis, thank you for that. Not and I had a dear feeling for him so much when we walked the bell. And before he was our great recreation director playing, he, was, he, he didn't work there. He coached our Wake Forest football team in Michigan. Great man, great coach. He really cared about you. He really wanted you to do well. He made it fun to play football. Um, he was like a father figure to all of us, and we didn't want to let him down. What a great man, a great impact he's had on my life. And my fifth one was Ed Taylor. Uh, Ed Taylor was a great little league coach in baseball and football. I only got to play for him one time in football, all stars. But I had, I was in the band, had a great learning experience there. He was more like a coach and, and a band director. The two things I really learned from him were attention to detail and discipline. Those things really carried a long way with me. When my, when, my, when my wife was in the 10th grade and her mother passed away, and Mr. Taylor, my wife was in the band, and Mr. Taylor became kind of a father figure, a parental figure to Lori, and I've always been dead to him for that. She'll tell you how much he meant to her. I'm up here tonight because of so many people. My thing that I've done especially but because of the influence of so many people. I just really think it's uh, the only way we get anywhere in life is with others. That's, that's happened to me for sure. I want to ask everybody here to reach out, be a mentor, be a case for somebody else who needs you. There are people all around that need us to, to encourage them, coach them, teach them, and be there for them. There are also a lot of people I'd like to recognize. I, I didn't mention some of my baseball teammates. I forgot about that. The coach Sloan touched on a couple of them. I do want a lot of these are here. Gary Rainer, Doug Butler, James Register, Dennis Bellamy, Albert Kirby, and Donnie Sutherland are all here tonight. Thank you guys for being my great teammates. There's some other people here too that I want to recognize before I finish. Um, these people have I had a big impact in my life too. We have three former Wolfpack Club board members, Ronnie Jackson, Leonard Murphy, Matt Campbell. Thank you, gentlemen, for all your leadership and guys over my career. Have a lot of teammates, a lot of classmates here at Bill in school with. Thank you for being here. Three members of the Wolfpack Club staff, my last staff are here, Bess Wood, Medea Hooks, and Medea Schwartz. Of course, got married a lot of them, Medea. And Nick Russell. The best is here with my good friend, Henry, Henry Trebekka, from our football staff. He's one guy that came right behind me to do this time. It's fun. I also want to thank Nathan McLean. Nathan's a the Sampson County native. He came all the way from Charlotte to be here tonight. The day we'll pack the lady, brought his brothers and his friends. And Nathan, thank you so much for being here. Nothing is more meaningful to me than being honored by the people in my hometown. I really am, will forever remember this and be grateful for this and grateful for being part of this wonderful class. I want to thank you. And before I leave, I do want to ask everybody to pray for the people in Ukraine. Thank you.